Today our guest is Turkish Parliament member of Armenian origin Garo Palyan. Mr. Palyan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paylan, we know about the Turkish President Erdogan's reaction on American President Biden's announcement regarding uh, recognition of Armenian genocide. But could you please tell us what is in mind of other Turkish politicians, public figures on uh, Biden's recognition of Armenian genocide? I mean, genocide happened 106 years ago, but unfortunately it was unpunished. So unpunished crimes uh, led to new crimes, and the ge genocidal policies has been going on for 106 years, unfortunately. Uh, last two decades, uh, we were able to speak about the MN genocide. That was new because for 80 years, there was silence. But after Hranting and other uh, democratic friends, we could speak about MN genocide. Uh, but the Turkish public was not ready to name it genocide, but they were ready to say something bad has happened. But unfortunately, after 2015, Erdogan has established a nationalist coalition with his nationalist partner. We, and in this five years, we lost almost everything. And the old denial policy is again uh, is what we are living nowadays, unfortunately. So Tur Turkish public uh, is influenced by the you know, uh, politicians. And five years ago, Erdogan was saying something bad has happened. And I am uh, telling about my condolences to the Armenian community. But now he is again following the denial policy. So when the leaders follow den denial policies, the nation also is uh, gets influenced by that. So denial is on the table, but still there are millions of people who are ready to uh, recognize the Armenian genocide. And we are just, uh, just uh, uh, trying to influence Turkish people to just uh, recognize the Armenian genocide and fa face it and uh, give the uh, no justice that it deserves uh, after 106 years. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. But uh, are there any Turkish public figures, politicians who welcomed Biden's announcement? Of course. In my party, no, my, my party's policy and uh, all, all the MPs of my party uh, is just uh, they, they are ready to recognize the Amin genocide and they are facing it. And uh, it, it, my central committee have just declared, uh, just announced a declaration saying that Turkey has to face the Amin genocide. Let's let's face it. And in other parties as well, there are some members who are ready to face it, but they don't have the courage to announce it publicly. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, all the four main four parties, which are two of them are secular and two of them are uh, nationalist, they are uh, in a line uh, of denial after Biden's decision. They just uh, declared uh, a common declaration saying that uh, this is a lie. Uh, no, nothing happened. Nothing like genocide happened in Turkey's history. But no, there are some uh, differences in that. If, uh, again, we get on the way of a democratization, uh, I'm sure there will be nuances, you know, and, uh, but nowadays we, we are under uh, hegemony, he, he, hegemony of a you know, nationalist discourse. When it ends, I'm sure, you know, there will be several, several you know, politicians who will be uh, eager to uh, recognize the Amin genocide. Uh, Mr. Palyan, you have submitted uh, legislation to Turkish parliament uh, to recognize uh, Armenian genocide. Uh, why did uh, you do it, sir? No, um, my no pain, my suffer is a subject to other parliaments. Uh, it is, uh, no, I'm not happy with it. No, for, for more than a uh, century, we have been no, uh, giving so much energy to for other parliaments to recognize the Armenian genocide, and several parliaments did it: French Parliament, you no know, German German Parliament, uh, Brazil, Argentine, Russian, and several other parliaments. 
but none of them just healed uh, my, my wound. And now uh, there is another parliament, you know, United, uh, United States parliament uh, last year just uh, you know, did the same thing. And now this year, uh, United States uh, you know, presidents have just recognized the Armenian genocide, calling it a genocide. It, of course, it is important. And it is understandable for Armenian people to put their energy uh, for their parliaments and leaders to recognize the genocide mm -hmm. because Turkey denies uh, this crime. But I believe there is only one parliament uh, which is going to heal our wound. It is the Turkish uh, parliament, which I'm the member, one of the members. Uh, no. So I'm just, uh, I just offered this bill for Turkish parliament to recognize the main genocide and remove the names of the you know, um, Talat Pasha and Merk Pasha who are the, the, the who, who are responsible uh, uh, of uh, the Armenian genocide. So yeah. this, I gave this kind of a bill. I know they are not going to say yes to this bill now, but uh, I hope that it's going to happen one day and that day our wound will be healed uh, with justice. And uh, uh, in this context, uh, what would be your next step regarding this uh, legislation, regarding this initiative? No, uh, I mean, genocide happened in this land and we used to live in the, on this land, you know, in Malatya, Erzurum, Van, you know, Bursa and other cities of Turkey. Those are our motherland as well. But the, those lands are uh, belongs to not only belongs to the Armenians. Those lands belongs to the Kurds, Turks, and Armenians, and Assyrians, and uh, uh, and other identities as well. We used to live together, but nowadays, unfortunately, we 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 don't live together. So, uh, with the justice, you no. Know, uh, uh, I, I my goal is to make our people um, uh, with the justice. Uh, they will uh, be able to live on this land again. At least, you no, know, they will know that you know, a terrible genocide have happened, and we found uh, the justice of it. So there are thousands of cultural heritages on this land. We had thousands of churches, thousands of schools, and several uh, cultural heritages. And they are unfortunately they are not in a good, uh, you no, know, condition. Most of them are demolished. Uh, with this kind of a ju justice, you no, know, maybe we can renovate them and uh, just uh, sh to show that uh, we used to live here. And with the justice, of course, millions of Armenians who are living all over the world can come here uh, with a, with a, uh, 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 to see their history. And some of them might have a dream to live here again. That is my uh, goal. And open the borders with Armenia, of course, that is very important because, you no, know, uh, uh, we are, you no, know, we are not only neighbors, you no, know, Armenians belong to here. If uh, we can, uh, we can open that door, I'm sure Turks are going to go to Armenia and Armenians are going to come to their motherland here. And that will be, you no, know, that will, uh, uh, my goal is to normalize it because Armenians belong to here. And uh, if we can make them easily come here, I, I think with cultural and economic relations, we will be happy. Uh, it will be more easy to just um, to just uh, end the bias thoughts with, uh, between two nations. Uh, Mr. Pailan, here uh, in Yerevan, we know about uh, Erdogan's announcement during the last days uh, that he. Uh, would like to normalize relations with uh, Armenia. But as Armenian Foreign Minister Arai was on set on Monday, uh, here in Yerevan we expect more real steps than words like during football diplomacy, you know. So how serious Turkish government or Erdogan to uh, normalize relations with Armenia? Um, no. Uh, only a democratic Turkey can normalize the relations uh, with Armenia. That is what I think. A nationalist government cannot do it. But unfortunately, Erdogan is following the nationalist policies. 
And last year, we had another trauma with the uh, war in Nagorno-Karabakh. So uh, the, our hope is uh, for Erdogan or another government will end these nationalist policies. And when you end those nationalist policies, you will uh, uh, you will you will want more that to solve your problems with your neighbors. We don't have uh, problems with not only Armenia. We have problems with Greece and uh, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and we have problems with all our neighbors. But only Armenian door is closed. So um, I offered to to the government and the parliament to first open the door. If you have a closed door with your neighbor, you can't solve your problems. First, you need to open the border. You need to have relations, cultural and economic relations. Then you can sit on a table to talk uh, and uh, to solve your problems. But first, we need to have a democratic government. We need to uh, be on the democratic way. And only a democratic Turkey can normalize relations with Armenia. And Again, I can say only uh, 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 democratic uh, government and politicians uh, can uh, solve their problems with Turkey as well. Uh, I, I can offer this same thing to Armenia as well. Maybe uh, we, our border were closed, was closed you know, for years, but we couldn't solve our problems. And, uh, some people also didn't want uh, that door to be open. Uh, of course, we heard several times some politicians wanted that, but no, we have to uh, think for future, how can we solve uh, our problems with Turkey and Azerbaijan as well? So if you have you no know, enemy countries, so-called, uh, you know, on your left side and on your right side, you can't uh, you really, really uh, you can't uh, think about future. So, uh, for a for a uh, for Armenians' future, Armenia also needs uh, democratic neighbors. We should think about think more on it. I think you know as Armenians. Mr. Palian, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much.